Well, hey guys, and welcome to Solar Cabin Channel. I've got a video I think a lot of you will find very interesting. Today, I'm going to be discussing a small solar power system, 400 watts, uh, that can be used anywhere. It can be used at your grid homes. It can be used in the city. It can be used in the suburbs. It can be used for an off-grid situation. It can be used for an RV or camper. Uh, it, and it is a system that is designed to be used either, either as an emergency backup system or for a full-time system used at your house to reduce your power bills and to run appliances in an emergency or a blackout. Now, just so you know a little bit about me, I have been off-grid for over 20 years, living with solar power, batteries, power stations, and that for the entire time. I am not some guy that just walked in off the street, made a YouTube channel, uh, lives in a grid home, and pretends to use off-grid appliances. I actually use these every day at my cabin, all right? So I understand these small systems. I use them every day. I teach people. And if you want to go to my channel, I have over 300 videos on my channel of all my different systems, solar power systems, water systems, septic systems, and a whole lot of other systems that you can use for off-grid and emergency use. Now, today, I'm going to be discussing lots of different appliances and different power stations, batteries, and things like that to go with a small system. But before we do that, I want to take you outside and explain to you the small solar power system that I use. So let's go outside. Okay, folks, so I'm outside here in front of my cabin. These are my two systems that I use primarily for my cabin here. These are both 400 watt systems. I'm going to be showing you how to use a 400 watt system like these uh, to run all types of appliances, uh, recharge all your gadgets, e-bikes and pretty much run everything that you need for an emergency or blackout system. Now these are four, four 100 watt Renogy panels and for many years, almost 10 years, this is the only system that I had here at my cabin. Now people are saying, well how do you install these? You can install them in a ground mount like this. You notice I just have mine set on cement, some cement blocks propped up with my old horse hitch panel here. They can also be installed on a roof if you want to. They can be put on a shed. Uh, they can be put on an RV, a camper, anything like that. You can get these panels in different sizes and different brands, uh, but this is just 400 watts and you can connect them in parallel, which is positive to positive, negative to negative, or you can hook them in series, which is what this system is. In series, they have a higher voltage and you can start collecting sun a little bit sooner in the morning, a little bit later in the evening. In series, they are hooked up positive to negative, so you have basically one big panel of 400 watts. Now, like I said, these can be mounted on a ground mount, they can be mounted on a roof, but some of you say, well, what if I'm taking them camping in an RV, or I just want to set them up for an emergency? That's where portable panels, that's where portable panels are really handy. And this is a, now this is just a 100 watt panel, this is made by Ecosonic, I've done reviews on these. This is a 100 watt portable panel that you can just set out and it has feet on the back so you can prop it up to get sunlight. These panels come in many different sizes. This is a 100 watt set. You can get them as big as 400 watts. They're a little bit harder to handle, but you can set these out just whenever you want to use them. Pull in just as much power as one of these if you have a 400 watt, or you can use multiple ones of these. Now these on the back, this is made by Ecosonic. Now this one is made by Ecosonic, which I've reviewed a lot because it's really handy as you can see, and also really well made for rugged use. It does have the different connectors. You can connect this directly into power stations, or you can connect it using the MC4 cables using a controller and, and charge up a battery that way. Same way these panels work. They don't work any different. They're just a lot more portable and easy to take along, especially for an emergency or a camping situation. All right, so those are 400 watt systems. I'm going to be discussing this system here because this is being used to power up a couple of big power stations and some batteries. And I'm going to show you just what kind of appliances that you can run and power from just a small 400 watt system. So let's go back inside. Okay, so I've shown you my uh, outside system and also showed you how you can uh, use portable panels to make a 400 watt system, which is what I'm going to be explaining here. Now I'm going to show you some different power stations and a battery system station uh, that you can use for running all kinds of appliances. These are used for storing the power that comes from those solar panels, and then you can use that power anytime you want for running appliances. So I'm going to start here with the very small system. This is a 300 watt. This is just a 300 watt power station. This one is made by Browie. I've used it quite a bit. I take it with me camping. This one only produces about 300 watts. Now it's important to understand the watts before you go looking at a power station because they come in various sizes. This one produces up to a thousand watts. My Anchor Solix C1000 up here, it has 1800 watts. 
So that's a difference in capacity, all right? A 100 amp hour battery down here, which you can see, this is a LiPo 4 battery. It has 1,280 watts of capacity. So that's the difference in size. 300 watt capacity, 1,000 watt capacity, a little over 1,000 watt capacity, and 1,280 watts capacity. Now this small unit right here, it is good for camping or something like that for running small appliances. One of the appliances that I really like, that I use all the time here, and especially when I'm camping, that's the Dash Mini Griddle. This uses 300 watts, so it will run off these small units right here. It opens up, you can open these up, and you can cook eggs, you can cook pancakes, you can do just about anything, uh, slices, of, uh, slices of meat, you can cook anything in this. It's only 300 watts. With this system and just this unit right here, you can still cook a meal for yourself or your family. It might take a little while because you have to do them in small portions, but you can still cook a meal. That's the Dash Mini Grill. Really recommend you get one of those for, with a small power station like this for cooking a small meal in a power blackout. These would be good if you have like that 100 watt Ecosonic, Ecosonic portable panel that I showed you. You can recharge this in about four or five hours off just that 100 watt panel. You don't need the 400 watt system for it. But now we're going to talk about some of these larger power stations and batteries where you can really take advantage of that 400 watt system that I showed you out there. So let me set this aside. Okay, so the next size up. These are a medium-sized power station. Uh, this is the Geniverse. It has up to a thousand watts. Okay, so it can handle a little bit higher watt appliances. This is a good size that I use all the time for working outside and around my place. In an emergency blackout, if you need power for maybe a day for a blackout or something like that, this is a size that I would look at because it will run appliances like this mini crock pot here. It will run this just fine. These, these run at about 700 watts. This is a sandwich maker, which most, most of you guys probably already have around your house. These run also at about 700 watts. You can cook, you can cook hamburgers, meat, sandwiches. You do all kinds of stuff with this. It's basically a mini griddle. And a lot of people already probably have one around your house. Also works really well with these uh, small electric frying pans. Again, these pull about 700 watts. This unit here can handle up to a thousand watts. Now, when you're running these, keep in mind that you're not running them continually. You're only going to run the you're only going to run these appliances for maybe 15, 20 minutes to fix yourself a meal. So they're not going to drain the system down, and you can do that several times using using a power station like this. So. So if you're looking for a power station that, that isn't going to break the bank, isn't too expensive, look at these mid-size that have, to about, have up to about 1,000 watts. That is a good size for a, for a short-term blackout or for camping or using around your place. The Blue Eddy, the EcoFlow, the Jackery, all carry units around this size that have about 1,000 watt output. Those will work really well with these small appliances like these. Now the next unit up we're going to talk about is the Anchor Solix. It is a bigger system that also has expandable batteries. So let me set this stuff out of the way and I'll explain that. Okay, so we've talked about the small power stations that are good for smaller appliances. Now we're going to get into the larger power stations. This is the Anchor Solix C1000. I love this thing. It charges really fast. It has good capacity. This has over a thousand watt hours of capacity and it can also have additional batteries stacked on it. We'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, but you can look at the EcoFlow Delta. You can look at some of the other models that have a larger capacity. And what you want to look for, this unit here, it has an 1800 watt inverter. Now it's important to know that a lot of your appliances, I use this for running my microwave, a lot of your appliances here may pull upwards towards 1500 watts. Things like a toaster oven, a microwave may, are usually running around 1,000 watts, 1,200 watts. Some of them, larger ones, may pull up to 1,500 watts. So you need a power station that has enough watts to run those appliances. This Anchor Solix has 1,800 watts. It will run these appliances. And just to show you, here's my microwave. I'll turn it on for one minute. There. Now, this is running off of this Anchor Solix C1000. It will run this just fine. Now remember that you're all, again, you're only running these for short periods of time. You can heat up water in this, you can heat up a meal for your family, you can heat up leftovers in your camper, an emergency blackout system. This system here will run all kinds of small appliances. Now we'll turn that off. That's just running on one minute. We'll turn that off. So these larger systems like this, they will run larger appliances. This is my toaster oven. I use this thing practically every day. This is made by Black & Decker. I've recommended it for a lot of people. This is an air fryer and toaster oven so you can 
So you can use it as an air fryer for use for cooking foods without a lot of grease. This also runs about the same power, right around a thousand watts. Uh, for these, for one of these toaster oven air fryers like this, you can get them that are bigger here and use more power. But this is a really good size for cooking a meal for your family. You can cook pizzas. You can do all kinds of stuff. Anything you can do in an air fryer or toaster or a regular oven, you can use one of these for. And you can run them off a power station like this. And again, you're only running them for maybe 15, 20 minutes at a time to cook a meal. So they're not going to drain down the battery. So you can run these several times off a power station like this. Now, again, this power station, this Anchor Solix and some of the other models also allow you to add additional batteries. So you can put additional batteries for more capacity for running them even longer. This size right here is good for a couple of days of blackout power. With an additional battery, you got three or four days, three or four days of power capacity to run all of these different appliances. Now, I'm also going to talk about a battery system. If you don't want to go with a power station, which can be kind of expensive but has lots of good features, then you can also use a battery to get the same results. Costs less, but you're using an inverter in separate parts. So let's talk about that. Okay, so I've shown you power stations from the small, medium to the large. You can also do the same thing if you get a battery. Now, I recommend a LifePo 4 battery. These are very, very safe. You can actually use them inside your house. They don't off-gas or anything like that. This is a 1,280-watt-hour watt hour LifePo 4 battery. This actually has more capacity than the Anchor Solix C1000. It will do the exact same things, but you need some more components. You will need a controller. Something like this. This is a 30 amp wanderer controller. This works with LifePo 4 batteries. You would hook your battery to your controller and then you hook your controller to your solar panels and that will recharge this battery. Anywhere from five to eight hours depending on how much sunlight you have. Then you can use this battery just like you use those power stations using an inverter and that's what this is. This is an inverter. It turns the DC power into AC power. Then you can run it, use it to run all your different appliances. You want to make sure that you have a, an inverter that matches the appliances. So if you, so if this takes a thousand watts, you want an inverter that can handle at least a thousand watts. Like I said, most of your larger appliances are going to be a little bit over a thousand watts. So I recommend maybe a 1500 or a 2000 watt inverter. Should be a pure sign inverter because, because some of these appliances have motors in them that don't work well well on a modified sine wave inverter so get a pure sine inverter that you will connect the cables from the inverter to the battery then you can plug in all these AC appliances I showed you here you can plug them into the inverter you can run them off of that okay so there's a whole lot of appliances you can run these off a 400 watt system again because you're not running them all the time they're not constantly on you can also run appliances like this electric blanket, all right? If in a blackout, if your heater goes down, you may need an electric blanket to keep you and your family warm. These pull about 100 watts. You can run them for a very long time off of either a battery or a power station system to keep you and your family warm until the power comes back on or used for camping, RVing, or off-grid use. I use one on my bed here at the cabin all the time because that reduces how much propane and other fuels that I may need to run for a heater. Excellent product to have at home home for an emergency or blackout or just to reduce your power bills, electric blankets. Some other appliances you can run off these systems. Now some other appliances that you may want to get to go along with your system. Uh, these micro portable fridges are really good. This is a fridge that will run off 12 volt, 24 volt or 110 AC. It has a good capacity. These will run, these only pull about 45 watts a few minutes every hour. So they're very low power use. And you can keep things like your medications, if you take insulin or anything like that, you can keep those in here so you keep them cold in a blackout. You can put your food out of your big fridge into something like this and keep it from going getting spoiled. Uh, you may want to use one all the time. If you're camping especially, these are very handy. I'm sitting on one right now. I actually use two of these here in my cabin. I use one for a freezer, one for a fridge. These use very, very low power, so you can run them off even those small power stations for a while. Off a large power station, these things will run for a week without draining your battery down. Excellent units, and you can run these off of just a 400 watt system with a battery or a small power station. Some more appliances. Another appliance that I use here all the time in summer in my cabin is a swamp cooler. This is a smaller swamp cooler. It has a tank that you fill up full of water. 
mist cooling the water, cooling the air down so it cools my cabin down. This is enough here in my cabin to keep my cabin completely cool all summer long without running a big air conditioner system. But in a blackout or emergency, one of these may be enough. You and your family are not going to be facing heat extremes. You can also use those larger, those Anchor Solix larger power stations or a larger battery to run a window air conditioner as long as you don't run it too long. Those things pull about 700 watts. So if you run it for just a few minutes every hour, it will cool down the room enough for you to make it through a blackout. Out. So those are all appliances that you can use off of just a 400 watt system. Okay, so those are just some of the appliances that I use here in my off-grid cabin all the time, all right? Running off of just a 400 watt system. Some other things that you can also run, you can recharge things like e-bikes. And this is my e-bike battery. It's in for winter now because I'm not riding much. You can recharge e-bikes off of these systems, either a power station or from a battery and an inverter. And then you got free transportation, folks. You're running off of free solar power for your e-bikes. Cool. All right, now some other things that you may want to consider uh, that you can also recharge these units, like these small power stations that I showed you and big power stations. You can charge them from your AC power. All right, and that way, if you need to recharge these up fast, like this one charges up, this Anchor Solix charges up really fast about a, in about an hour. You can charge them up when the grid is on, and then use those with a solar power system if the power goes down. Now, you can also charge up a battery the same way. If you're going to do that, then you need one of these. This is a 20 amp charger designed specifically for life pull four batteries. You can get these on Amazon. They have battery cables. You simply connect the battery cables to the battery, plug this into AC, plug this into your AC, and you can charge up one of these batteries. It will take about five hours to recharge up one of these batteries with a 20 amp controller, but who cares? You can set it out in your garage or whatever, charge it up, set it back in the house when you need it, and you can just store the capacity of the battery until you need it for a blackout. So you can charge any of these up using AC or from a 400 watt power system. Okay, folks, I hope that helps uh, to, you to understand all of the different appliances gadgets and things you can charge up your phones your phones you can run your laptops you can run your wi-fi you can do all your communication systems you can run your entertainment system you can run you can run a tv a radio a ham radio you can run all of those off of these larger systems okay and so i would recommend that you go on that you consider which one would work best for you. I really recommend system for a blackout. A 400 watt system will charge all of those up in a short amount of time and you can do those as either portable panels or a ground mounted system or a roof mounted system. All right, folks, I hope that explains a lot about small off-grid systems. Please do visit my channel, leave a like and subscribe and have a great day.